What's up everybody? Welcome back to another brief nurse talk. I wanted to jump on, I just got out of class and I wanted to come on to talk about the story that I saw on social media this past week regarding the nurse, Nurse Tristan Kate Smith. That was her name. She recently took her own life. Back on August 7th is when she actually left this world. She worked as an emergency room nurse in Dayton, Ohio. I'm not sure what facility, and she was only 28 years old at the time of her death. <sighs> she did leave a note chronicling her relationship with her employer. She referred to her employer as a narcissist. She talked about the fact that nurses get no protection where she worked. She talked about hearing the rumors of how abusive the employer was, but not believing any of the rumors that she previously heard about them, only to find out that the rumors were true, that in fact, the people at the top, the hospitals, the administrators, they do not care about the nurses. In one of her statements, she said, I so desperately want to help people, but I cannot in this abusive relationship. She called the relationship with her job abusive. I am only sorry to my patients and colleagues. You deserve so much better, but my abusive partner is relentless. And she stated that perfectly. Hospital, the administration, the people at the top making the decisions, sitting in those boardrooms, relentless. They do not care how they treat or how they handle their employees. They do not care. In the letter that she wrote, she talked about how each day she was asked to do more with less. She said, you beat me to the point that my body and mind are black, bruised, and bleeded out. So when I learned about her, what was going through my mind was how did she get to this point? And I just wanted to come on and share that your life is so precious and so important. You should never give away that much power to anybody, specifically your employer. They are not worth it because at the end of the day, they don't care about you. Whenever you like, this is the purpose. This is one of the main things that jobs companies they want for you to do. They want for you to give them a thousand percent along with your first born, ch born child and your last born child. Initially, when I started working as a nurse, I was wholeheartedly dedicated. You know, I would follow a lot of the rules like not bringing extra supplies into the room and not doing this and not doing that to save the hospital money. But as time went on, I realized, wait a minute, like you really don't care about me. And what really started getting me to think my way, change my way of thinking as it pertains to trying to be a company person, being, being for the company, is just being in the midst of like coworkers, other nurses who would be ill, but come to work ill to show that, hey, look, I really am sick and that's the reason why I need to go home. I didn't want to call out because I didn't want to leave you guys short or I didn't want for my coworkers to get upset with me. I have been at work and a mother or a father will get a, a call from the school saying that their child is sick and management is basically like, well, who's going to take your patients? So just after being, so being in that kind of an environment, I learned very quickly, like, yo, y'all really do not care about people. Let me tell you how much I know that employers do not care about their employees. I remember one time there was a snowstorm, really bad snowstorm. The state of Maryland was declared a state of emergency. This was like maybe 12, maybe 14 years ago, state of an emergency. And they prohibited anybody from getting on the highway. I had to work that Saturday morning, but could not make it to work. Obviously the highways are closed. Do you know, like a couple weeks later, they came to me telling me that they gave me a point for being absent on that day. And I literally had to fight it. Like, yo, y'all are wildin'. How are you gonna give me a point when the highways are closed? The thing with nursing is a lot of nurses go in 
with such good intent and good hearts. Like you guys want to help your patients and want to do so much for your patients. Do that. Do for your patients. You can do 110, 150 for your patients, but you do not do 150 for that corporation because that corporation do not care about you. So when I say don't give the corporation that much of yourself, whenever you're sick and you need to call out, call out. Don't come to work sick. Use your PTO time. Don't feel obligated to sign up to help. It is not your job to staff the hospitals. A lot of nurses also get caught up to where they confuse their identities. Like being a nurse for me is a job. That is a job. When I'm out or I meet people and they ask me, oh, what are you? And I'm just like, huh? Like, what do you mean? What, like, what do you want to know? Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I nurse. I'm like, I'm a nurse. What else do you want to know? I'm a nurse. That's my occupation. It's not me. It's not who I am. And a lot of nurses get that twisted. Like, they can't separate the two. For me, I know how to separate the two very well, which is one of the reasons why I even struggle here on YouTube. Because whenever I do other content, because I'm like, yes, I work as a nurse. Yes, I can teach nursing content. I can share my experience, but that's not all. And the algorithm to be trying to keep you in line. Like whenever I do content that's outside of nursing, the algorithm is like, get back in line. What do you think you're doing? And I'm just like, no, I do this not for the views, not for the likes. I do it because I thoroughly enjoy YouTube. So even if the algorithm is not pushing some of my other content, guess what? You're still going to get that content because it's about me. So I think it's very important for new nurses, nurses who are, for individuals who are thinking about entering the nursing field, that's just your job. Don't get too caught up in it. You cannot live your life giving a company 100%. And you know, millennials, because I'm an older millennial, I'm an older millennial, millennial Millennials have gotten a lot of heat because I think the millennials, we have figured out like, wait a minute. So y'all want me to come here, work, 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 work. I get my performance review and y'all still giving me, I'm just meeting the requirements. Like what? <laughs> also, you want me to come work, 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 work. And after the first year of working, I only get one week of vacation. And I got to work another five years before that one week could turn to two weeks. Like, nah. The millennials have figured it out. And I think the Gen Z's are going to take it and run with it. Because the Gen Z's are not having certain things. Also, with the nursing profession, there's been a shift. Because what's happening? And I'm surprised this young girl, 28 years old, got caught up like this. I'm really surprised she got caught up. Because these younger nurses... They don't have time. They're not playing with them. They're not here to play. These young girls come in a year, a year and a half. Some of them don't even make it to the full year. And they're like, all right, I'm out. Back to school. A lot of newer nurses are coming in with an agenda. They know, okay, CRNA is the goal. So I must do a year in ICU. During that year, I'm going to get my CCRN certification. I'm going to try to learn as much as I can about taking care of the sickest set of patients. I'm going to get trained to take care of CRT, balloon pump patients. Then I'm going to leave, probably go work in a CVICU for six months, apply to CRNA school and peace. I'm out. They are figuring it out because what's happening is the administration across the board, all they want to do is take, take, take. Like when I was a new nurse, I remembered going in and for a very long time, my body would not like I didn't have the urge to pass urine till way late in the shift. Sometimes four, five o'clock in the evening will be my first time voiding, passing urine. So let me explain because why my body will go into that mode. It's because the unit that I worked on, toxic with a capital T. Reason why I say that unit was toxic was number one, it was an IMC unit. The ratio was supposed to be three to one. We would never be at a three to one ratio. We would be at a four to one ratio. And when I tell you we took care of some of the sickest patients, these sickest patients, patients that in any other hospital would be ICU, 
they put them up on that IMC unit and we would have four of them. So it's like when I got to work, my body automatically knew that, all right, we're in a war zone. We need to get into war mode because you're going to be going, 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 going. That unit was no joke. And the nurses on the unit, great nurses, knew how to handle their business. When it came time for staff meetings, town halls, we would call meetings with the CNO and we would beg and plead and say, listen, people are going to die. People have died. We have had sentinel events. Okay, we are walking in the room and finding patients O2 sacks down in the 60s. We have to hurry up, rapid response to patients, start a code, do this and do that simply because the ratio, you guys are not keeping us to the ratio we're supposed to be at on this unit. We're only supposed to have three patients. We're up to four patients. And because of that, patients are being ignored. Patients are being found like in the worst condition. That specific unit not only were we taking care of super sick patients, but they also wanted us to travel with the patients. So I'm on a unit, I have four very sick patients. One of them gotta go for a test. I gotta leave the three sick ones on the unit and travel with this one. My three that I'm leaving behind, I can't even ask my coworkers to watch them because guess what? My coworkers are drowning in their own pile of mess. Like literally, I used to describe working on that unit like this the water would be right here and the water would be getting here. And my only goal was to keep my nostrils above water. Like that's how I survived that unit. Like I'm talking about eating lunch on the go, like eating lunch, standing up at the nurse's station, just simply because we did not have enough time to get everything done. And yet they would still want their documentation every four hours. You still had to document a certain way. You still had to get this done, get that done. Oh, don't forget, you didn't update your whiteboards. Like what? Update the whiteboards when I came in. You realize this man was dying? Whiteboard where? Whiteboard how? And that's the thing. Management would come in and they would scrutinize and nitpick at every little thing. They won't even take out the dry erase marker and update the board for you, watching and seeing how busy you've been running. Like, I never forget on that unit, one time I had a manager. I was, this lady was sick all night. I came in, I had her, the family members are in the room, all this stuff is going on. And yeah, I didn't update the white board because she's sick. And then I still have yet to attend to my three other patients. And you're coming in, doing an audit and asking this. And the Kendra... Um, introduce herself to you guys. I noticed the whiteboard isn't updated, but when she's done, she'll update it. Like, girl, what? This lady can't breathe. Her O2 sats are 84 and it keeps dropping and it's not coming above 84% and we don't know why. And the resident is coming. He's on his way to evaluate her. What are you telling me about a whiteboard? Like, are y'all serious? That's the type of stuff nursing, nurses go through. It's like we're sitting here fighting for the lives of our patients and administration is like, well, we don't know what's going on. Yeah, we're gone for the day. Or we're in a meeting and the nurses are left fighting. And the reason why it can be so morally distressing is because you went to school and was told that you're there to help and that you're going to be able to help. And then you get into... So very quickly into my nursing career, I learned, okay, refocus. The patient is my priority. The person laying in the bed, that's who I am obligated to. I am not obligated to these four walls. And the other part of it is the RN license. I like to stress that your RN license or your LPN license, your nursing license period belongs to you. You get to control and dictate what you do with that license. You pay to get it renewed every year or every two years. You can decide, you know what, I'm going to let it expire because I have no plans to use it again in the future. Your RN license belongs to you, meaning that you set boundaries for your license. You set boundaries for your license. I have worked in situations where someone might ask me to do something and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. And some people are like, what do you mean? Like, no, you're not doing that. It's my license. I, you don't pay to renew this. The hospital don't pay to renew it. It's my license. I get to determine what I do with it and how far I want to go with it. I set boundaries for my license. I set boundaries for myself as a nurse. No nurses and nurses in general, you guys have to get into the habit. Like freeing yourself from that mentality of being a slave to these institutions, free yourself from that mindset. 
Free yourself from that mindset. You're sick, call out. Why are you showing up to work sick? Your child is sick, call out. You asked to have these days off because you needed to be present for your child's play, your child's soccer game, whatever swim meet, and they schedule you on that day. You can't find the switch, call out. You have an RN license, call out. Because what's more precious than time? The time that you're missing with your children, with your family, missing important events, you can never get that back. And guess what? That hospital been there 50, 60, 70 years before you came into existence. It's going to be there after. Like that's just my mindset now because companies will take, take, take. And you guys know before I wrap it up tonight, there is a saying, I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with it, like, God forbid, if you drop down tomorrow, they'll have your position posted the, at the, by the end of the business day. It's like, oh, okay, send some flowers to the family, but post that job because we need a person back in that slot. Hospitals don't care about you. Your jobs don't care about you. You have to prioritize yourself, your mental health. Like I hear a lot of nurses saying things like, well, when are hospitals going to understand and when are hospitals finally going to listen to what nurses have to say? They're not. Their main goal is profit. We live in a capitalistic society. Their main goal is to earn, gain, recoup, and retain as much money as possible. They do not care about you. So you have to be the one to take a stance and prioritize yourself, your mental health, your physical health, your safety. That's my little nurse talk for tonight. Um, may this sweet nurse's soul rest in peace. I'm really sorry that she couldn't find comfort in someone else i'm really sorry that she i don't know if she looked for help if she sought out any kind of help any kind of assistance i don't know if like the people that she worked with was just like well this is just what we got to deal with because no it's you just don't have to put up with it so that's all i have to say on that and i will catch you guys in another video